Hello, beautiful. <laughs> Sorry. Come on. Circumstances beyond our control have meant that um, Chris has had to, to leave for a while. Um, which, as you can imagine, I'm not going to go into the details because they're just really difficult. Um, it's not anything between us, it's external circumstances have meant that. Which, as you can imagine, we're at, well, we hope we're at the tail end of the winter wave of pandemic. But you just never know because there are... Um, I'm going to have to learn to to turn off the news because I I actually do think that there is this um, need to generate news and therefore generate panic and everybody's got an opinion and everybody knows what everyone else's business is and everyone else is quite keen to tell everybody else what to do. So um, that's really difficult. You come in. And we have a very mournful and sad dog, so I don't know where I've got, uh, where we'll be with the story. But basically, um, we ha we're in a position where there are um, there are two dogs on heat in the village. We think, or at least one. I'm like, please God, that they're on heat at the same time because I'm not going through this with the next one. Then starts again down. And I hope to God it's a really short series of videos that I can show you just um, our daily life here. Um, spring is here. Today is really beautiful. This week has been a challenge for lots of reasons. It didn't start off very well. So um, when Chris left, um, Chris left, the dog disappeared, or Chris didn't leave, just as Chris was leaving, or due to leave to go do what he needs to do, um, the dog disappeared for several hours, which was not great. Um, there was, a, there was a, an unbelievable and tragic accident right outside the house. So this, um, uh, this poor guy, um, it was like a, a machinery accident, a farm machinery accident, and this poor guy had his leg, what is it, traumatically amputated. Um, and I'm not going to go into the details because, um, yeah, Saturday night, the images of things were playing in my head. It was not, it's not something you expect, but... Um, I've only got an image and I've only got a brief glimpse of what I saw. Um, the gentleman concerned has to, to go through now. Fortunately, he's, he's in the hospital, he survived, he's okay, but he will now have to, to learn to live with any part of his leg and, and the trauma and the impact of what happened. So, um, and then the rest of the week has just basically gone on and it's, it, and it's the dog. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah? Are we going? So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we have the do not run away from me cord. So here we go. All right. Good boy. You can go. Yeah? You gonna go? You know those days when you feel like you're a real cow because you're not letting him run. But right now, the number of times that he's headed off to that house or disappeared and the emotions you go through. Are we going? 
What? <laughs> Not happy, are you? Go on then. You know, when you sort of see someone and you go, they're not happy in their work. We've got a dog who is not happy in his skin. And partly because I think, I think some of it is he doesn't want to go because Chris isn't here. So he's come further with me and know Chris than he's ever done. If I didn't have him on this rope, he'd basically be off. And uh, there wouldn't really be an awful lot that I could do about it. I know where he'd go, I suppose. But uh, I don't really want to annoy our Portuguese villagers by having our dog annoying theirs. And I know people are saying castrating, but at the moment we've had that discussion and um, I don't necessarily think even if we, we went and tried to get it done now, you know, it's, it's not going to happen today. It, it would be later on in the week. So there's still this moment to deal with. Um, and we've got to think that process through for the dog and whether that's something that we want to do to him. And it's a topic for discussion. We haven't made a decision. Um, please understand that is not um, that is our decision to make. And um, by me raising it as an issue, it's not it's not me inviting an opinion or a comment or any advice. We're quite happy to make our own. So um, we're not asking for that or inviting that. Um, so yeah, he's he's really struggled, and I think in in all of that, he's he's then not really been sure where Chris is because obviously he didn't see Chris go because he had gone off on his little love jaunt, um, and I think for him, with what's going on in his hormones, it, 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 there's a whole mix of things. So it it culminated last night in. Um, him just reaching crescendo points, so he was getting very frustrated and scratching the door and he was ripping up a piece of cardboard. And then for the first time in the entire time that we've ever had him, he began whining at the bedroom door. Normally he sleeps outside, outside the bedroom. He sleeps on a, he has his bed and he knows, and he's really good because he'll stay there. to go, don't you? You just want your girlfriend. <laughs> so at the moment, that is the beginning of this story, this part of the story, which I'm not looking forward to. Um, I'm trying to deal with the reality of if you do have to do things in another country, beyond your control um, what that impact has in terms of how much time you you then have to be away from home you know with quarantines and um, isolations and whatever else we're now realistically looking at him not coming back for at least a month in order for him to comply with everything uh, which is quite hard it's quite hard and in all of that you, you just got the risks of of um, can he get back 
will he get back? Um, so anyway, we just have to deal with it. And I think echoing in my head is what happened last year. So I am actually recording this. I'm going to cry. I'm recording this today. It's a year ago that I left Vienna to go on the sailing course to Portugal. And that was going to set us up for the summer. And I literally said goodbye and walked out of the house and I didn't see Chris for three months and I never went back. You know, in the sense that we went back in later in the summer to um, go and collect all our things and our whatever because we'd given notice on our flat. But effectively, I never went back. You know, I didn't, I didn't get to do the thank you, goodbye and do that whole um, leaving thing it was it were it felt like it was just ripped away um i suppose what i'm trying to be guarded about is um that in life things will come along and things will happen and um, you will walk out of your door one day and something will come along and change it completely and it may be a temporary change, it may be a dramatic and catastrophic and permanent change. And you know, my mind goes back to the guy who, outside, outside the house last weekend, probably went to work on Saturday morning or the morning that he went to work and um, never expecting that his, that, that day, the end by the middle of that day, his life would be changed catastrophically. Um, he's alive but it's a catastrophic change that he has to deal with and his family have to deal with um, the impact of that and, and we all face that we all face th those choices that those events that we don't know what are going we don't know what's going to happen and I suppose it's then that you you sit and you think about the, the things that have happened in the past and you, you can reflect one the catastrophic things the major things that have happened so so for us in our in our life's journey we experienced a we set off on a holiday to go and visit Croatia and we experienced a head-on car crash and um, and Chris broke his back and that was a catastrophic you know that was a major change that was something we we not expected one minute we're driving it down a country road the next minute bang um, and there were real positives from that. That that episode was, I don't cry about that episode. I don't cry about that memory because of the kindness of strangers, the, the people who helped and the, the, the amazing um, serendipitous moments that enabled us to cope with that. Amazing things. So you, I can only look back on it as a positive. Um, there was the weekend we went to we went to Wales when we were searching for our boat, searching for the boat that we bought, and um, we went to we were boat hunting and we went for a weekend in Wales to look at a boat, and um, and late one night Chris had a heart attack which came completely out of the blue. Um, again, you know. You step out of your door, you step out into your life and suddenly something ha happens and the, the point for me that was traumatic with that one was returning to the room after, the, the, the morning after and um, I, I think I've written about this, there were just bits of, you know, there was the, there was the plastic tabs, the, the covers on the heart monitors that they'd put on his chest there were the bits of his hair that they'd shaved, that was on the bed, his, his glasses were on the floor, his clothes were still hanging in the wardrobe. And I'd, up until that point, I'd been okay. You know, I just, I just dealt with uh, this situation. But when I saw those, he was suddenly, oh God, what could have been? And I think for me it was, I could, I could have been returning 
to this room and that's all that's left of this person. That's the only things that I've got. So it's hard. And for anybody out there who's dealing with the loss of someone, um, I hope that you take my tears as tears of, of some degree of understanding. Oh, I wasn't planning on saying all of that. So I hope you will come with me on the next however many episodes this is going to be and we'll see what unfolds and, and what I can do with a roundy dog.